Let's go to, let's just go to chapter 7. This is where Jesus is anointed by a sinful woman. Now, to frame this, he's in the house of Simon, a Pharisee. And the woman, of course, brings the alabaster perfume, and she brings the, um, she's uh, wet his feet with her tears. Alabaster jar of perfume, there it is. And here we go. 39. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him, and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner, namely probably a prostitute. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the biggest, bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly. Now remember, a denarii is a day's wages. So let's say it's 100 bucks, okay? So it's 500 denarii, it's 100 bucks, what's that, $50,000? All right, the other guy had uh, 50, so what's that, 500? I'm sorry, sorry, 5,000, 5,000 bucks. So one guy is owes 50,000, one guy owes 5,000 bucks, dollars, and the debts are forgiven. Who is going to be more grateful, right? Obviously the guy with the 50K, who borrowed 50K, and that's forgiven. He's like, oh my gosh, wow, amazing. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Thank you so much, whatever. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Look at this. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say amongst them, so who is this who forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Look at that, folks. Isn't that amazing? You have so many Pharisaic people who think that they are bringing pleasure to God because they think they're doing all the moral codes or they think they're uh, studying the scriptures or they think they're, um, you know, uh, doing all the conditions and spiritual practices that the Pharisees also did that too. So these are the people who are, who are, who are, who are so uh, sure of their spiritual superiority. Okay. And they're not able to admit their sins. They're not able to admit that they're a sinner before God. That their deeds are but dirty rags. And they arrogantly believe it's that, that God is impressed with them. When God is the architect of the entire universe. I mean, what an arrogant, arrogant thought. That God would be impressed with you. When he's the architect and the creator of the universe, the mathematics, the, the, the science, the, the, all the atoms and neutrons and, protons and all those things that, 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 that make up this incredible, vast universe. I mean, that is the architect. And you're, you're bragging. You're thinking that your religiosity is, is impressing him. Or that even worse, that it saves you. And this, in, in people who know divine principle, a lot of them fell into this trap of understanding indemnity. Like, oh, I paid my indemnity. So since I paid my indemnity, I paid off that sin. I earned it back, right? I paid my dues. And thus, they started believing that they, because they did some indemnity condition, that they earned that blessing or they earned that salvation. You're a piece of trash. You didn't earn crap. You're an arrogant, narcissistic, self-bloated, self-divinizing demon. Indemnity condition, conditions don't inherit, don't allow you to gain salvation. And this is such a, it's such a non-biblical, non-Christian view of, you know, the things that we do. These indemnity conditions that you do don't afford you salvation. You don't, you don't um, 
say, oh God, what can I do? You know, I've, I've sinned or, you know, I've, I've did this thing. So what do I have to pay to, 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 uh, to, 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 uh, be forgiven of the sins? Oh, well, I'm going to do this or that indemnity condition. And then I'm going to pay for that sin. Well, then you're no more, you're, you're just as foolish as the Catholic who thinks that they can pay for their sins when they, uh, give their confession and do 10 Hail Marys or whatever, how, 100 Hail Marys or 500 Hail Marys. So you got these idiots who believe that they're murdering somebody on these gangbangers, you know, gangsters in the Italian mob. They murder people. They're doing pedophile cult, cults in a Catholic church, whatever. And then they go confess their sins and they do a little indemnity condition. To them, they don't use the word indemnity condition, but they're doing it. And this is the folly. This is such an evil view of understanding God's love. That somehow through your little indemnity condition, you've paid off the grave insult, the grave crime of your sin. It's such an arrogant picture. And so many people, so many people who study principle and think they're so, and, and think they're, they're greater than all the Christians in the world, did, do not even understand the basic concept of sin and grace. I mean, it's It's unbelievable. Of course, in sanctuary, you know, I don't think there's a lot of people. There's maybe some, but I don't think it's not the majority. But even in, when you look at family, I mean, it's just, it's, it's totally Pharisee. They're complete Pharisees. You don't earn your salvation by your little, little stupid indemnity conditions. I'm sorry. Okay? God is not impressed with your little indemnity condition. A better way, to, an easier way to understand indemnity condition is like a formal apology to God. You're showing the depth of your heart and the depth of your apology to God of what you've done, the sins you've committed. Your indemnity condition is like a formal apology, a formal beseeching God, expressing the deep grievance, the grief, deep grief that you have for committing a sin. You know, you have these young people who think, I did, you know, I'm watching porn and I'm having sex with girls, but I did my little indemnity condition. No, you, that doesn't eradicate your sin. That doesn't make you sinless. It's God's forgiveness that can forgive you of sin, not your stupid little fake indemnity condition, which of course become very, becomes idols. People think they can just keep sinning and just keep doing the indemnity. I paid it. I paid it. This time I paid it. I did my little 300 indemnity conditions or my little cold showers. I paid for my sin. That's why I'm going to watch porn again. You see what I'm saying? It's because it's ridiculous. You become a little Hail Mary idiot. You're not concerned about the heart of God. You're not concerned about the grievous insult that you're giving God. You're not concerned about the, 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 the stabbing God's back that you're doing. You just think that because you did, a, in, in, you did a little indemnity condition, you can go on sinning. You're a piece of trash. An arrogant piece of trash. Not one of us gets salvation by doing an indemnity condition, you dumb bozo. It's by grace you receive the blessing. It's, you know, not one of, not one of us get the, get, uh, the lineage of God by doing indemnity condition, you arrogant trash head. That's given by the thousands and thousands of years of God's walk through providence. That's given by the blood and sacrifice of Christ at the cross and the Christ at his second coming and the 10,000 crosses. It's given by the blood that he had to spill for you. And that you make a foundation of faith with and then substance with. But that indemnity, those indemnity conditions don't buy you salvation. No, I know I'm, I'm speaking to the choir when I'm talking about sanctuary because sanctuary, everybody in sanctuary should know that. But it's like so frustrating when you see a lot of religions have this view. And a lot of, of course, people who even studied principle and are in the family fraud and they betray father and son, they have this view. They have this view that they paid an indemnity condition and they're done.
And of course, look, look what happened. Look what happened to the Pharisee. Look what happened to the Pharisee, Simon. And you had this sinful prostitute woman who was forgiven her sins because she had, in the words of Jesus, she said, she had greater love. She has, her great love has shown. She had great love. He, he said she had great love because she had a focus on Christ. She had a, she was chasing Christ. She was not just chasing any other person, a prophet. She was chasing Christ. And she knew of her sinfulness. She knew that she was imperfect. She knew that she needed him for salvation. She knew that she needed him for forgiveness. And that heart moved God. Isn't that amazing? That heart moved God. The arrogant Pharisees, do you know you're in dealing with? Do you know? That didn't move God. Do you know how many religious services I've done? And do you know how many uh, laws I've obeyed? And do you know how many conditions I've done? That didn't move God at all. Because he was a trash bag. And remember, this is a Pharisee that invited Jesus to his house. So he was actually more able type among the Pharisees, which is interesting. A lot of Pharisees didn't even want to get near. He wanted to kill Jesus. This was a somewhat positive Pharisee. But we must understand the reason why understand, when we understand the motive of God's love and, and, and the, the root of God's love upon which he gives us salvation by grace, not because we earned it or deserve it or because we gained it, because he gave it to us out of his great, insurmountable, insurpassable love, then that stimulates in us an equal and opposite reaction of give and take or receive, that when we receive such great love, we want to give it back. <clears throat> and it's not by giving it back or trying to do things that please God that we get salvation, but we are now involved in the heart realm. Our business of doing good things is not to gain salvation. It's not some type of utilitarian commerce, trade, buy and sell. We've transcended that and now we're in the heart realm where we're trying to bring pleasure to God, joy to Him. We're not concerned about trading and you've given me this, so I'm going to give you this back. No. We're in the realm of having received such insurmountable, insurpassable grace and love that, is, that can never be repaid that we are stimulated in our heart of hearts, the deepest recesses of our being, to want to bring joy to that person who gave it all, who gave it all, gave it all, to save a craphead like me, or the, the amazing grace says, a wretch like me. That means basically a craphead like me, a shish head like me. That's what it means, okay? <clears throat> And if you, if you don't, you, we got to understand, if you understand that, then your motivation, your intention, your reasoning, your purpose for trying to please God and follow his commandments and do what he says and, and try to bring him pressure and surprise him with, 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 you know, good things is not because you feel you gained a salvation from him, but it's because it's for the simple, simple, but pure and unadulterated reason of you just want to bring your daddy joy. That's it. You just want to see your daddy laugh, smile. That's it. That's it. It's that freaking simple. It's not some deep kind of crazy thing where you got to explain a whole treatise on it. You just want to make your daddy happy and proud. You just want to see him smile. All the other things, you deserve that. I didn't, no, all that crap is bull crap. You receive such an unbelievable grace, right? We can never pay, never, ever pay it back. You'll never be able to pay back God's grace. Never, never, never. Your works as as dirty rags. Don't 
ever, ever think you can pay God's grace back or his love, or the path that true father had to walk or Jesus had to walk on a cross. You can never, ever, ever pay that back. Never, never. You can work all 10 million times eternity, which I understand is not a number, but you will never pay it back because it's unfathomable. And you are vanishingly small. And your good deeds are vanishingly pitiful. <laughs> you understand? And it's not about you. It's about God and His incredible grace. And when you understand that you transcend yourself, you transcend your narcissism, you transcend your wickedness, you transcend your stupidity, you transcend your self-absorption, and you can just be like a child who wants to make your daddy happy. <laughs> which of course the world demonized and said that's bad and that's weak and that's pitiful and that's, you should be able to get... No, that's the highest, 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 loftiest, most highest aim in the, quote, religious life in the world of God is to bring your daddy happiness, your heavenly father joy, to make him smile. That's the greatest thing. I think that was, that's why, you know, I, I was so, I, I could confidently say when I was serving Father, etc., that Father enjoyed to be with me the most out of anyone on earth. Yeah. Uh, of course, more than Han Mother, because she was bitching, complaining all the time, watching Korean dramas and always complaining about him and making him angry all the time. And anyways, anyways. <laughs> but of course, that's why Father enjoyed having me around. He called me to be with him 24-7 because he enjoyed having me around because my all I tried to do, and this was before, this was before, uh, you know, Father gave me any uh, responsibilities. All I tried to do was try to make Father happy. And I failed many times, of course, as a kid, you know, and But that's all I try to do. All I try to do is just try to make Father happy. Try to make him proud. All I try to do is just, you know, if I'm around him, I want him to have a great time. I want him to smile. I want him to laugh. I want him to have fun. I want him to enjoy the things that I enjoy, things that I enjoy but not, not to force it upon him. But because, but because I tried to enjoy the things that he's enjoying, even though I didn't do that perfectly, like I didn't, fishing was not my biggest thing, but I tried to enjoy. And of course, we both love animals so much, and I loved raising animals, so I tried to, and I could see that brought some father so much joy. So it was such a joyful thing. He would come to Hanamnong many times just to see the animals. You know, the little lizard and the, and the, uh, and the, and the, and the bird, birds. And that meant so much more to Father than all these stupid leaders giving him these reports and, and all this. It just didn't, it didn't mean anything. All their little vying with each other and politicking one and against the other and, oh yeah, I'm trying to get in Father's good graces. Look what I'm showing with this or that. No, it wasn't about that. It was about bring joy. And of course, we don't do it perfectly, but as much as we can. Father always so happy to see the, bless the blessing he gave me and the queen and our relationship, which is strong. And I give all the praise to Father. He loved that. It made him so happy. His boy, finally, this was the, you know, one of the, you know, the first child that, 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 that's not bitching and complaining about there being forced into marriage, that wants to celebrate marriage and the blessing, which is the gift from God that he wished to give from creation, to have his children and grandchildren. That brought him joy. It brought him so much joy. You know, and when father would laugh and would smile and he would, he would, he would do those, you know, bellowing laughs, you know, that from his belly when he was just stimulated by um, joy. That brought me so much, that, you know, that brought me like spiritual endorphin high. It brought me like this incredible joy. 
just seeing him laugh like that and smile and like bellowing these, you know, these beautiful, like, you know, how his eyes would become like little sun, sun, you know, what is it? Like sunrises. <laughs> They'd become little pew. <laughs> The way his eyebrows and the way he's just smiling, just beaming, beaming, beaming this joy just because he's receiving something that is so different and it's something that only his, his child could give him. You know, all these stupid Korean leaders who eventually, of course, betrayed him, he knew those bozos were not there because he knew their motives. But when a child does that for you, wow, I mean, the joy of a father, a joy of a, it's unfathomable. And of course, we see this here in this scripture. Anyways, folks, it is such a crazy time to be alive. I have to say that. There's so many other things I wanted to show you, but we'll move that to another time. We thank you for joining us today. Just remember, God's grace is incredible, folks. When we can grasp it, it completely recreates us and transforms our lives forever. We'll never be the same. Give your life to Christ. If you have done those things, repent of your sins. Make Christ the center of your life, the center of your purpose, the center of your universe, the center of your existence. Do things for His glory and His joy. And you will see it through to the end. We'll see you. 5 o'clock sh sharp, 5 a.m. sharp on the King's Report tomorrow with Tim. Saturday is coming up, and we will see you next time. God bless, God speed, and may his kingdom come. Thank you.